So, this is the bit I've been dreading the most, if I'm honest. It's cutting out the rear arch. Not entirely sure how I'm going to approach this. I've been thinking about it for weeks, months. Uh, try to get as much information as I can off the internet, but there isn't much. And uh, so, this is how I'm going to go through it. This is a center sliver section from the inside of the arch. I've cut this out just to give me a kind of profile or contour of what the arch looks like. It sits in there, trace that onto the, uh, the body of the car, I've drawn a line 10 mil below that just to give me some steel to fold back out to make the lip for the uh, inner steel. Um, and now I'm just going to cut it out and see what happens. As bad as I feel, the arch is out, terrible, but the arch was bent, uh, yeah, I feel bad, it was a nice piece of steel, it's 35 years old, anyway it's out, and here we have a nice contour, my guesstimate wasn't too far off, it, I think it's just a little bit flat here, uh, but apart from that, it's just just fractionally smaller than the wheel arch itself. So that gives me the 10 mil to bend out. And then I can uh, plate it up. I used the air nibbler. For one mil, went straight through. Nice cut all the way around. Didn't put any heat into the panel, didn't distort the panel. All looks good. So now we just gotta bend it out. Um, and then plate it. So I've just done my first run around the arch with the pliers, put about 20 degrees bend into the steel. You can see here I'm using the pliers, got my reference mark here, so each bend is the same distance in. A uh, couple of runs and we should be good. So I've just made a start on my filler piece. Uh, I've cut a 14 centimeter wide uh, piece, 1.5 mil steel, out of a, a larger sheet there on the floor. Uh, I calculated that 14 centimeters using this cardboard. It should be wider than I need, so let's see how we go. So one half is the uh, one half is in, tacked, surround, and we've just got the outer skin just kind of clico clamped on there, and then we're just gonna run a few spot wells just to seal her all up before we go crazy. But uh, just finished uh, cleaning up. The uh, the edge, trimmed it back, and then linished it up. Kind of just took just took it just took the tops of the welds off, back to the uh, the the plates all seamed up. It's nice, looks good. Just cleaned up the inside. Not too worried about what it looks like as long as it's not rough and it's going to catch a tire. Yeah, panel's still good. Just got to tidy up these bottom ends. Might have to bend this down a little bit in this one. Bring this plate up to meet them. Drop that off. Just finished uh, sealing the ends, uh, the inner sill to the wing, onto the arch inner sill and the back. Just smoothed it all out. So the biggest headache I've been having is basically uh, figuring out where to put these arches. Um, I've been thinking about it over the last year. Um, it sounds pretty easy just to say put the arches on, but I wasn't exactly sure where the axle needed to be within the car, and I wasn't sure exactly then when the arches needed to be, and I didn't want to commit to putting the arches on without having the axle uh, in the correct position in the car. But when you've changed from leaf springs to uh, four link and the watts linkage, you know where where does the axle go so it's taken a lot of measurements yesterday but finally I've managed to get the axle square in the car I'm not entirely sure um, if it's where the original axle was but the wheels are dead center within the uh, wheel well and they're also uh, dead center um, for the turret so the shock that goes into the turret will come straight down into the axle I don't know if that's the correct way of doing it, but it's the way that makes the most sense to me. 
So that's what I was doing yesterday, was basically figuring out where the axle needed to be. Because once I've got that point worked out and positioned, I can figure out then when the arches need to go. So that's today's plan, basically, is just to mark out where the arches need to be and also have a look at fitting the arches. Or not fitting them, but it's certainly making the holes in the top and shaping the flanges to fit the bodywork of the car a little bit better. Um, the arches are pretty good, but you can see here that this flange isn't flush with the car. This angle here needs to be adjusted slightly. And still, I need to figure out exactly whereabouts this arch needs to go. I've got the car set at the moment at the ride height that I want, but obviously the suspension will compress. So I'm thinking if I jack up the wheel as high as it's possibly going to go and then center the arch off the wheel in that highest position, then at least the arch should be centered somewhere near um, the center of the wheel. So that's my plan. But there's no real guidance on this. Uh, I looked online uh, and again, it all comes down to arches. There's five or six different types of arches. There's tarmac arches, forest arches, and there's different companies that make the forest and the tarmac arch. And this arch is a, a Monte Carlo arch. So it's a little bit bigger, a little bit taller, comes up the side of the quarter panel a little bit higher. Uh, and there's no real guidance on where this flange starts or where the flange at the front starts from the, the door the door opening there's no real guidance on where these go so you've just got to basically make it up as you go along and hope hope you're doing it correct because obviously we're going to have to drill through the aluminium into the steel and we don't want to end up with 30 odd holes in the car panel that are in the, the wrong position so Right now, I'm just going to make some calculations. I'm going to jack up the axle, put the wheel right up into the wheel well, position this arch where I think it needs to be, mark it out, and then start to work on the flange, basically, so it fits. Fits the body work of the car. Once I've worked on that, then I'll start to put the holes in. Um, in the arch, ready to mark them holes into the body of the car. Um, Obviously this arch also needs to be primed, sanded back, just keyed up a little bit and primed. I use the same primer as I used on the car, it's very good for alloy. Uh, and once that's got some primer on it, that will also keep the aluminium away from the steel bodywork. So it will prevent any corrosion occurring. And when the final installation comes, there's some secret flex that's going to go between the car and the arch as well. Just to add a, some bonding and second, secondly, a gap between the two to stop any um, corrosion happening between the two metals. So that's where we're at. So that's the wheel a full full height and it looks pretty close but I do have about uh, 10 millimeters all the way around. And the plan was always to have Basically the suspension and the brakes set up such that I could run 13 inch and 15 inch wheels without any problems. So in this position now you can see that the top half of the rim has disappeared behind uh, the arch. So I'm never going to be running it as low as that and even if, even if I wanted to get close to that I could drop it down maybe one inch from here and still have an inch or two inches of travel in the up position. So. Basically, to get this arch straight in its highest position, I figured to make this distance and this distance the same, so such that the wheel isn't going to foul on the arch, and basically put it in that position. Because this distance and this distance are exactly the same. When the car drops back down again, the wheel should be nicely in the center of the arch. That's my thinking. I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> not entirely sure if that's a good plan, but it's the only one I've got right now. So that's what I'm going with. I'm going to mark out where this goes. Put some tape in so I can draw around the arch, and then when I drop the wheel back down, I know exactly then when the arch, where the arch needs to be.
Okay, so that's that's the arch marked up. I know roughly where it's going to go when the wheels drop back down. Now I can work on trying to get these flanges working a little bit better with the body line of the car. Try and make it go around the swage line a little bit nicer. Uh, sits there nicely. When I've dropped it down, so the end of the arches at the bottom of the bodywork was yeah, no, no fouling. I thought it was fouling on this side a little bit, but it seems okay. So yeah, happy with that. I start working on these flanges. Also, try and get rid of these. I guess these uh, are for rigidity uh, and used as part of the manufacturing process. I did see couple of Mark II Escorts at the Autosport Motor Show in Birmingham that had this piece on that was welded to the body of the car but it just looked a bit shy so I'm going to take mine off uh, and just go straight down to the flange. I hope I don't lose too much rigidity in the arch but having that bit just sticking out across the bottom of the car just doesn't look very nice. So I hope that's not a mistake, but I'm going to take these off, basically, just uh, just to the flange uh, and pot rivet it on from there. See how we go. You can see now, just been massaging the ends with uh, an adjustable spanner, set so at about three mil, just basically using it. Getting to the point now where this bottom piece has to be hammered out, but it's a bit too late in the evening to be hammering. But the flange all the way around is, is nearly there. Just needs that bit taking out. Remade the swage line. So, basically just cut off the uh, excess uh, supporting rod that used to stick out the side like that, a little bit unsightly, cut that out and then I've just uh, linished it back with the angle grinder because the, the roll itself st st stuck out quite proud against the surface of the arch and obviously as the arch goes against the car it's going to have to be flush a little bit there so I just smoothed them out. Done the same on uh, this side and I've done the uh, driver side arch as well. So that's it, pieces of metal have gone. Just going to get the hammer and dolly now and try and contour this shape to fit the car. Okay, I think I'm pretty much done fettling the arch. Uh, as you can see, the gap down here is pretty good. By the time we get some rivets in there, that's going to pull up quite nicely. And there's going to be a one or two mil of uh, tiger seal down there as well. The swage line looks good. Very good across the top and the back. This back piece here, this flange comes straight and as you can see now I've just put a very slight curve in it because the contour of the uh, the rear quarter there is curved so just basically ran that over a metal bar just back and forth just to put the slightest radius of, of corner or bend into that. But this fits pretty nice now, uh, the wheel is up at its highest point, the diff is on the boot floor and the wheel still turns and the arch, when the arch goes in there's the tiniest amount, tiniest amount of wheel scrape on the arch, but I mean, the wheel is never going to be this high. Okay, so before I was talking about Clico clips, uh, if you don't know what they are, they're a bit of a specialist thing. I think they originated from the uh, aeronautic business. Uh, basically, you need a special pair of pliers like this, and then you get these clips kind of spring loaded. You've got like an insert that comes out. That's a three mil insert at its narrowest point. So you put a three mil hole in your piece. You want to join two pieces together. I've just bent some metal over here. But you put that in through the hole. Let it go. And then that's a tight fit. Basically it holds that, uh, that paddle together. And that's going to allow you basically to keep the arches in place when you go around and uh, put the rivets in. Talking at the rivets. I've got some four mil countersunk rivets. I don't know if they're the correct ones, but they were on Motorsport tools as well. 
there was four mil and there was uh, this length and there was slightly longer. I think this is like a 10 mil and there was like a 12 mil length. So there were both four mil. So I'm assuming four mil is, 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 the, <laughs> is the rivet of choice for the uh, Mark II arches. But again, I have absolutely no idea. And these are countersunk rivets as well. I was gonna have the rivets exposed when I first uh, thought about putting the arches on, but the more cars I've seen with them hidden away, uh, the more I've kind of swayed towards that, uh, that idea. So these are countersunk rivets. And again, I don't really know how you do it, but I, I've got a four mil hole there and I've kind of just countersunk the, the material there at the top because I guess that's where the, um, the countersunk rivet is going to fit into to keep it flush. It's not 100% flush. I don't want to countersink it too much because the steel here is very thin. Same on the panel there. I think it's only maybe two mil thick, that aluminium, so I can't countersink too much. But hopefully that's enough to pop, put the rivet in. And then I'm just going to use a rivet gun to pop that in. So this is your bog standard rivet gun. Uh, I've also got one that connects to the end of a drill, which I saw it's a little bit more automated. Uh, and it's supposed to take all the heavy lifting out of uh, trying to clamp this close because it's a bit of a task. And when you're talking about 30 uh, rivets on each arch, four arches plus the front valance, you know, you're over 100 rivets and I don't want to manually be compressing 100 rivets. But for this example, I've got two pieces. This is just a trial piece for me as well, just to see how well the rivet works and see what the, uh, the countersink looks like. So basically you put that in, make sure you've got the right size end on, put it in, you put some pressure against the rivet to keep it in and then you just pump this. You can see it's a bit of a job. That's one pump, push it down and go again. Crikey, there we go. You don't want to be doing a hundred of that. But anyway, the rivet is in and you can see squashed up the back quite nicely and it's not 100% flush just because uh, I didn't want to countersink it as I said too much but um, a little bit of linishing that should uh, that should scrub up quite well in fact let me just give it a go with the wheel here see what we get okay just give that the tiniest tiniest flash over with the uh, linishing disc on the angle grinder there and you can see that it's it's come down very nice you can't really feel the rivet at all by the time you've got a tiny little bit of filler in there just to fill the center of the rivet, you're not gonna be able to tell that that rivet is in there. So that's the game plan. Got to drill 30 holes in each arch and then... Uh... So I've marked out where the hole's gonna be. I went with five uh, centimeters between each hole. That worked out, I think it was about 123 centimeters from basically the top of the flange here all the way around the top to the top of the flange there. And uh, divided by the five equated to about 24. So I should have about 24 rivets across the top and then three or four down there is 27 and then three or four down there, it's about 30, 31 rivets in total. I think it might be a little bit overkill. I've seen some with less than 30, but uh, if you think I know what I'm doing, then you, you're mistaken. This is all just trial and error. Um, so basically I'm just gonna put this first hole in here, I'm going to make this three mil just so I can put the Clico clip in and I'll make a hole down here at three mil and a hole down here at three mil just so I can get the arch onto the car and then uh, I can drill and countersink these holes later on when it's a little bit later and um, I don't have to make as much noise, I can do that job later. So I'm just going to put the small holes in here first just to get the arch onto the car and then we can start working on the next part. So this is it, I have the holes, one hole, two hole, hole on the other side. This is, uh, <laughs> this is the no turning back. Well, you can turn back, but it's just gonna mean filling holes in your quarter panel, which I don't really wanna do. So I'm gonna get the, the arch lined up. I'm gonna make a mark with my trusty pen. I'll drill a hole, put a, a clamp in. See where we go. How hard can it be? I would recommend using these basically just to stop the drill bit wondering but I don't really want 
Also, I don't want to bend the panel. Radio, wish me luck. Here we go. Let's hope this goes well. First hole of many. Uh, let's see how that went. Okay, if it's down there. Oh, if it's there. Happy with that. So it's nice when your holes line up. Oh. Magic. I've reprimed this. I'm going to start putting the arches on very shortly. Put two or three coats of primer on here. I'm going to put a coat of white on there as well. We've also got the seam sealant in there. As I said, it kind of creates this transition you can see it really but it's not quite 90 degrees the water will come down and hopefully run off or run down this way plus it's sitting on the seam sealant if it has to sit there it's not sitting on steel and I just ran that round the edge to seal this welded area here the back one I've already prepped up I gave it a couple of coats of uh, high build primer and I just put a coat of white on just from a spray can just to help give it uh, some extra protection. Then I'm going to screw the uh, or cut rivet the arch on. I'm not going to use as much sealant on the back here. Um, and then when the arch is on, stone chip like what's underneath here, pretty hard wearing stuff. All that's going to come up here onto the bodywork and uh, down. On the inside of the arch. Yeah, that's it. That's how you fit your arches, mate. So at current time, the arches still haven't been fitted uh, with the pot rivets, but uh, to fit them is just exactly the same process as fitting the front arches. Uh, you just put a bead of silicon flex or silly flex or sealant around the flange of the arch itself and then just pot rivet it on. I would recommend putting as many pot rivets in uh, to the holes before you start to fasten them down just to stop the arch moving. If you do one half of the arch and then start to come round to the front of the arch or vice versa, you'll find that uh, some of the holes don't line up exactly. So just put the pot rivets into the holes um, and then fasten them up. So once your pot rivets are in, you can either leave them exposed uh, or you can just lend them back like I did on the front arches. You simply just use the angle grinder with the flappy pedal disc and uh, just move them off, doesn't take much. And then the tiny little holes that you left with inside of the pot rivets, you can just put a spot of uh, filler in there, body filler, whatever you fancy, just to smooth them out even nicer. And once the whole thing's done, just give it a coat of paint, nice primer, and then you're ready for final paint. And that's how you fit your rear arches. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you on the next one.